In the early 1990s, it became pretty apparent that there was going to be a revolution in our ability to interrogate genomes and understand the genetics in individuals. We approached the Wellcome Trust with the view that we would create a major center in Oxford called the Wellcome Trust Center for Human Genetics, which would undertake the job of trying to link the genetic revolution to human disease. We started at the beginning with the view that there will be multiple waves of technology that will allow that to be done, but ultimately it's a problem of statistics and bioinformatics. And so we put at the heart of the center that actually the analytical challenge is the major challenge, and we still believe that today. The Wellcome Trust Centre for Human Genetics is now a very large interdisciplinary research centre with about 450 scientists in about 45 research groups. Scientists in the centre have played a leading role in a number of the large national and international collaborations in genetics and genomics. We were centrally involved in the HapMap project, played a leadership role in the Thousand Genomes project. More recently, in a collaboration with Illumina, our WGS 500 project aimed to get a sense of how whole genome sequencing could impact on clinical medicine. The WGS 500 project was a project to sequence 500 patient genomes to see if we could identify the molecular cause for their disease. The current testing for patients with genetic conditions relies on knowing particular genes that cause that condition. But an awful lot of patients go undiagnosed with that because we don't know all the genes. What whole genome sequencing allows us to do is to sequence their entire DNA in order to be able to find these changes that may cause their condition. The three key uh, partners were the Wellcome Trust Centre for Human Genetics, the Oxford Biomedical Research Centre and Illumina, and we had a network of clinicians that were involved in identifying the patients and submitting those to the study. In a quarter of the patients overall, we found a diagnosis, and in some subtypes of disease, it was more like half. So it was key to say this can be used in the clinic for making a diagnosis. The big outstanding question in genomics is whether it would ever be applied in a clinical setting. And the WGS 500 project showed, I think, unambiguously that it had huge potential in a clinical arena. Using the WGS 500 as the model, the UK government initiated the Genomics England program to sequence 100,000 genomes in patients in the NHS and will end up generating a huge body of very useful data used for clinical purposes. One of the strengths here is the leading role that many of the PIs are having in the disease-specific genetic discoveries. Anything from neuropsychiatric disorders into cardiometabolic traits and reproductive medicine and biomarker discovery. My primary focus is on obesity and uh, identifying uh, genetic variants that are associated with obesity. So far the data has shown us that overall obesity is a neurological trait largely regulated through hypothalamic regulation of sensation of hunger and satiety, where fat distribution seems to be regulated through adipose tissue and fat cells. So we're really starting to sort of pinpoint both the heterogeneous facets of obesity, but also the underlying biological mechanisms and pathway. Modern genetic and genomic studies typically generate huge amounts of data and so we've had a major focus on analytical groups developing the techniques that are used to make sense of that data to extract as much as possible from it. My group in general works on developing uh, approaches that use statistical methods to try and analyse patterns in genetic variation data. I've been fortunate recently to have been involved in the largest study to date of UK genetics involving about 2,000 people. What we found was something amazing is that individuals clustered genetically and when we plotted where those individuals came from on a map, what this revealed was that there are differences at extremely fine scales and in many cases these can be connected to past invasion events that have occurred such as of the Vikings and of the Anglo-Saxons. An understanding of ancestry is essential. In order to perform disease gene mapping, we need to take account of ancestry patterns to avoid false positive inferences. And that's especially important when we're trying to map rare mutations that are more affected by recent ancestry changes. So as well as the work on human genetics, there's a major focus within the centre on the genetics and the genomes of the pathogens that make us sick. Viruses and bacteria, which cause a huge amount of infectious disease, also have genomes, they have DNA and we can learn a lot about the nature of disease and about the spread of disease and about the prognosis for particular patients by looking at that DNA. We've been developing an app that you can run on your laptop or on your tablet 
which will take sequencing data from a patient and will tell you which drugs will and won't work. So we want to give, within a couple of minutes, a direct answer that will help the doctor make the right decisions for how to treat the patient. One of the great things about using DNA, instead of using a biochemical test for drug resistance, is that you get a whole load of extra information for free. You learn about the ancestry of the particular infection, you can tell whether or not it's a, a Beijing strain of TB, which particular version of MRSA you've got. So there's a huge amount of information encoded in the DNA, all of which comes for free when we do this. The Wellcome Center is the leading center in the world for developing these novel tools, particularly in the context of disease. As new diseases are being deciphered using these tools, the importance of the center is likely to grow over the course of the next 10 to 20 years. There's been a revolution in our understanding of genetics and its role in human disease over the last 10 or 15 years. Looking forward, we want to continue to pioneer advances in genetics and using that information to transform our understanding of disease and to improve human health and healthcare.